Keone the Shapeshifter. Long ago, in a forgotten time, there was a boy who lived on a remote island in the middle of the sea. He lived in a fishing village with his mother and father, and, as you will soon see, had a very rare and interesting ability. His name was Keone, and he was a shapeshifter. For those of you who do not know what a shapeshifter is, I will explain. Shapeshifters are able to transform back and forth from being a human like you and I and being a certain kind of animal, like a dog, for instance, or a mouse, or a crab, or a small fish, or a... Well, you get the picture, I'm sure. Keone was no ordinary shapeshifter, though. For while most shapeshifters can only turn into one animal, he can turn into any animal he wanted to. Any animal he could manage to touch, that is. Kione accidentally discovered he had this ability when he was about six years old while fishing with his father for the first time. He had just caught his first fish from the ocean and was struggling to pull his hook out of its mouth. The fish flopped about struggling to escape and he found himself feeling sorry for it. Kione had never taken the life of a creature intentionally before and wondered what it would be like if he were a fish that had just been caught with a hook in his mouth. Should I be feeling sorry for this fish? Or am I just being silly? He thought to himself. I do, after all, have to eat. And this fish looks plump and well-fed. I'm sure it caught and ate many other creatures before I caught it. If only I could actually be a fish. Then maybe I could... But Kione was never able to finish his thought, for, at that precise moment, he transformed into a fish just like the one he was holding in his hands. Both Kione and the fish he had just been holding dropped from midair into the shallow tide pool he had just been standing over. If Kione's father hadn't been looking directly at him when he transformed from human to fish, he probably would never have guessed what had just taken place. But, as it happens, he was looking at Kione and swelling with pride at the sight of his son catching his first fish. His pride turned to horror, however, as he watched his only child quickly shrink into the form of a small bug-eyed fish. It took half a minute for the fish Keone to realize that he was, in fact, a fish. As soon as this realization struck him, he wished desperately to be human again and transform back into his human form. Keone was too young to understand exactly why this had happened, and it took one more accidental transformation for him to learn how his shape-shifting abilities worked. This happened at a time when he wanted to understand how it might feel to be the tiny ant he happened to be holding in his hand. Keone immediately became an ant himself and quickly transformed back just before being stepped on and squashed by his mother. This experience made Keone realize that he could only transform into a creature he was actively touching. Keone's mother and father weren't particularly bad parents, but they weren't particularly good ones either. They weren't angry at him for being a shapeshifter, but from that moment on, they made him swear never to tell anyone in the village what he was capable of and never to transform again. They were a very superstitious folk and took it as a bad omen that their son had such a strange ability. They treated Keone with a great deal of distrust from then on and never let him out of their sight. They rarely even let him leave their hut with them, and they most definitely never let him near any animals. This prisoner-like treatment became so unbearable for Keone that only a few days after his 14th birthday, he ran away from home. He got along decently for the first few weeks, living in caves by the seashore on the outskirts of the village and sneaking about cautiously from place to place so as not to be seen. He caught fish and drank from small streams for sustenance and enjoyed very much the feeling of being free. His parents, while genuinely sad for the loss of their only child, were also somewhat relieved to have Keone gone. They made a good effort to look for him, of course, but, as I mentioned before, were not particularly good parents, and after a week or so of searching, they gave up and moved on with their lives. Over time, Keone found it more and more difficult to live on the outskirts of the village without being seen and was forced to move further and further away. The village was positioned in the most lush and plentiful spot on the coastline of the island, and the further he was forced to move away, the more dry and desolate the land became. The fishing was still good, but fresh water became nearly impossible to get without being seen. The island was small, and Keone was sure everyone would know of his disappearance by then and come to bring him back to his parents if they discovered his whereabouts. 
He was determined to have his freedom, though, and found ways of sneaking water at night when he was least likely to be seen. It was a lonely and difficult life, and he soon found himself longing for companionship. This desire became so strong that his mind began wandering dangerously close to wishing he was an animal at times. Once, Keone caught himself almost wishing he was a part of a herd of wild goats that happened to be walking by on the lava fields. He always made sure to quickly shut this out of his mind before it got to the point where he actually really wished it, though. Truth be told, Keone was more afraid of his shape-shifting ability than even his parents were, though for very different reasons. While his parents feared being shunned and exiled by the village for having such a strange child, Keone simply feared the act of becoming a small ant or a helpless fish out of water, as you can understand, I'm sure. One day, Keone was fishing at the edge of a cliff near deep water when he lost his footing and fell into the ocean. The waves were high that day, and he frantically swam as far away from the cliff as he could so they didn't knock him unconscious against the steep wall of rocks. It was a long swim to the safety of the nearest bay, but he was a strong swimmer, and he made for it. As Keone paddled along, he tried to tell himself that everything was going to be okay, and fought back the feeling of fear and complete helplessness that welled up inside of him. He hadn't been swimming for long when something truly terrifying happened. A large and soft something brushed against his legs. He turned back to see what it was, and there, swimming just beneath the surface of the water, was the unmistakable shape of a large shark. He began to panic and swim frantically towards the bay. The shark swam around in front of Keone and came straight at him. Though fear gripped him, he chose to be brave and thought to himself, I'm not going out without a fight. He dove underwater and looked right at the shark speeding towards him. Keone held his fist back, preparing to strike the creature. He watched it open its terrible jaws and threw his fist right at its snout with all of his might. But his fist hit only emptiness. At that same moment, he felt a great whoosh of water and something slammed against his chest. The water was swirling around him and the shark, though he couldn't see it clearly, seemed to be thrashing wildly about. What is happening, Keone thought to himself. He put his head back underwater, and then he saw it. Two sharks swimming about right in front of him. Back and forth they sped. But wait, the second one, that was no shark. It was a dolphin, and it seemed to be attacking the shark. Was this dolphin rescuing him? The two creatures were battling fiercely now. The shark kept trying to swim back towards Keone, but the dolphin was preventing it from getting too close to him by ramming it with its nose. He could see blood darkening the water slightly and wondered if it was from the shark or the dolphin. Keone came up to breathe for a moment and then quickly plunged his head back underwater to see what was happening. The dolphin was swimming right at him now. He couldn't see the shark anywhere. In an instant, the dolphin had swam directly beneath him and was nudging him forward with its head. Without thinking, Keone wrapped his arms around it and held on tight as it began to swim towards the bay. He just couldn't believe what was happening. What in the world was a dolphin doing risking its life to save him from a shark? The dolphin even seemed to know that he needed air. It would dive down to swim for a short spurt, then come up to give Keone a chance to breathe. They were still a good distance away from the bay when he saw the shark again speeding along right behind them. We aren't going to make it, he thought. I'm slowing the dolphin down. It can't swim fast enough with me on its back. If only I was a dolphin too. And then, of course, it happened. Keone turned into a great, beautiful, and powerful dolphin. He swam and swam as fast as he could right next to the other dolphin, and somehow he wasn't afraid anymore. They both turned to face the charging shark. The sight of two dolphins and the disappearance of the easy prey seemed to make the great creature lose interest. It slowly began to swim off into deeper water. Keone turned to the other dolphin when he was sure the shark had gone. It nodded its head and began swimming towards the bay. He followed suit and didn't stop swimming till he reached the bay's calm waters. The other dolphin paused in front of him and drifted lazily in the current. For a long while, Keone and the other dolphin remained still and watched each other. There was something very strange about the way it looked at him. It seemed to be waiting and thinking, as if it had to make some sort of decision before moving again. And then it happened. Right before his very dolphin eyes, it happened. The dolphin transformed into a human girl. It happened so quickly that Keone's brain hardly had time to register it. One moment, there was a dolphin. 
and the next moment there was a girl, smiling and waving at him. This surprised Keone so much that he quite forgot that he could turn back into a human himself. The girl pointed towards the surface and swam up. Keone followed her up instinctively and poked his head out of the water. The girl began to make noises with her mouth, but Keone had no idea what she was saying. It wasn't till the girl swam over to him and held one of his flippers up for him to see that he realized he was still a dolphin. Instantly, he wished he were human again and became so. Aloha, said the girl with a beaming smile. Uh, aloha, replied Keone. My name is Melia. What's yours? Keone, he replied. Aloha, Keone. I've noticed you living out here alone for a while now. I wondered why. Now I know. You're a shapeshifter too. I'm from another village. They exiled me when they found out what I could do. I got so lonely out here until I made friends with a pod of dolphins. I was swimming with them when I saw you being attacked by the shark. Keone was beside himself with happiness. He had a friend, a friend that understood what it was like to be him. He thanked Melia for rescuing him and, as you probably guessed, they became the best of friends. They had many incredible adventures together and were never lonely again. The end. Good morning. I hope you enjoyed that story. It's time for breakfast, but I found this in the bushes. I was a fool. I left our hot dogs out last night and I was actually thinking, oh, there's nothing around here to eat that. I forgot about the mongoose. So, mongoose got away with our breakfast. We have a little bit of eggs and some beef jerky, so maybe I can make something out of that. Mongoose stole our breakfast. Really? Yeah. A mongoose? Yeah. I mean, unless it was a goat. <laughs> I don't think so. No, it's got these little scratch marks on it. There's a huge blue lobster shell. Bunch of them. All along the shore. There's another one. I got a big one. Oh, nice. It's huge, right? Oh, that's a great place to keep it fresh, too. Perfect. So while Axe continues to fish, I'm going to grab us some firewood here, and I'm going to start a fire and get our breakfast going. I got a tiny Christmas Aww. mask. Aww. Alright, hurry, go throw it back. Nice! Caught another one. The plan was to use sausages and these eggs. Now these three right here I got from some wild chickens that just lay eggs all over our yard. <laughs> so we get free wild chicken eggs. Uh, we just feed them scraps every once in a while and they just hang around. This one's from a uh, store. Dude, that's huge. Look at that. That's amazing. Two of them. That's going to be great lunch. I really want something else with my eggs besides just eggs. And so I have to get creative here. We got jerky sticks. I'm going to cut it up and mix it in with the eggs. Uh, how, what was your sleep? Was it just on the rocks or, 
or did you have a? I sleep on the ground. On the ground, I, wow. I tip, but I sleep on the ground. So, jerky sticks and eggs. It's actually pretty good. Would you like a little bit of food? I would, but I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I eat. Well, I was gonna say we're about to make fish, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't eat. Well, we have it's vegetarian. Let's see. Here you go. Oh, wow. That's vegetarian. So you've been out here for six weeks in that cave? No, all over. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't stay in one spot. Isn't that cool? Sea sponge? Sea sponge, yeah. I found so it cool. over on the beach over there. It's like an actual sponge. Yeah. It's we could like dry our pot. What? We should dry our pots with Oh, yeah. You could clean the... So these right here are called ice cream beans. That's what it is. Ice oh. cream bean. Mm. It's a bean pod. You open it up. And it's got these delicious ice cream, sort of sweet textured mm, bean pods. It's like ice cream. <laughs> delicious. Oh. Oh. Rain. Rain. So I was just talking to a lady who, she basically lives here. She's been here for about six weeks. And she said that she doesn't bring any water. She just kind of, I guess, gets water for people. And but when it rains like this, this is actually the perfect time to get water. This is fresh rainwater. If we had a tarp, we could collect this rainwater and drink it. A lot of interesting people in the world. I gave her some tea and some water and some honey. She really, really appreciated that. Uh, I know I would if I lived here for six weeks. That's good. That's fine. A little bit of tea. All right, so we're gonna hang out in the tent until the rain passes. The door burst open and somebody erupted through it and shouted, Jacob, you another key. Look at that. That's a, I think that's a ocean oil rig pipe. Hello. This is a po'opa'a, and they are very nasty with their bite. You don't want to stick your finger in there, it rips you open. No, you can't, said Malfoy, his one. All right, Ax, so I got to go run back to our campsite because I made a big mistake. I left my wallet in a back backpack there. So mm -hmm. I'm going to run back, grab my wallet so nobody steals it, and our car keys. While I'm gone, I'm going to send you on a little treasure hunt. There is water bottles in here, buried somewhere in here. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you where. Challenge. See if you can find them, okay? Buried? Yep, they're buried under some rocks in here somewhere. All right, I'll be right back, okay? Mm -hmm. So I ran into Spirit on the way back again. And she had two coconuts with her. She was like, can you open these for me? <laughs> she said she'd been trying to open them for two weeks. So I cracked them against a rock and then I broke it open, pulled it open so she got some water and the meat. And uh, I'm like, man, that's really, really crazy. She's about 45 years old, something like that, 50. She's been out here for uh, three weeks, she says. There's no water. There's nothing out here. It's my favorite part of the island because this is desolate. Except for that. All right, well, let's head to that abandoned building. There's an abandoned building I saw on the map over here. I'd like to go check it out and see what it's about. Let's go. That's pretty neat. Look at that cave. and stop where he landed, his wand raised. There's the abandoned building right there. Keep 
Belt, private property. So the coastline of Hawaii can't be private property with the exception of Jeff Bezos' this little spot. I think that's the only exception that he just bought here actually, just a couple miles that way. He owns a little bay. But uh, other than that, we can be on the shoreline all we want here. Yeah, probably shouldn't go past this fence line right here. But we can go around over there. But look at that, they got a fishing shack there or some kind of building. Um, and uh, man, this is in the middle of nowhere, miles from anything. And there's even more miles that way. What a, what a paradise, so beautiful. Really sad. Um, there's some flowers here, I wonder if uh, somebody I don't know. It doesn't look like anybody lives here, though. <laughs> but shells and cement. Oh, that is neat. They got all these shells and the cement here. Cemented into the uh, lava rock. Look at that. That's a beautiful fish. There's one building here, a picnic table. Looks like there's some stuff deep in there. Look at this. This is cool. You just sit here and watch the sunset. They even got another landing up there. But I want you to know that it was I who discovered your secret. Yeah, I caught a couple. Gonna go back and cook the ones that we caught over there, so. Yeah, these are yeah. the two guys? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, with net, uh-huh. Yeah, they gave me uh, some food. Oh, no, cool. Yeah, some banana bread and Oh, awesome. And... It was good meeting you. Uh-huh, uh-huh, you too. It's done. This one's almost done, I think. Right. Look at how sharp this fish part is. Yeah, you can see, you don't want to swallow that one, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, look at that filet. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you put salt on it? Alright Adventure Agents, well hopefully you enjoyed this father-son hiking, camping, and fishing adventure as much as we did. Remember, life's an adventure and love is a key and love is a who and love loves you. And we love you and we are so glad you joined us on today's awesome adventure. I love you, Axe. I'm so glad that you came hiking with me and camping. I love you so much. Ow! Here, let me see. Hold it up. Oh yeah, look at that. Yikes. A good one. Oh, nope. There it is. That thing is huge. Dude, it's so big. That is so big. Yeah. Put that one in your ass, we'll put that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you on the next adventure. Agent Tech's out. Agent Tech's out.